What's going on YouTube? Today is Saturday. Um, I'm here at the race that I've been talking about for the last maybe month and a half or so. Um, and uh, just kind of wanted to give you an update. Um, I actually am, uh, I'm sorry, kind of distracted with a lot of stuff that's going on out here. So it's kind of funny because when I registered for this race, there was a lot of things that I didn't know that they didn't kind of talk about until you know, they send you the confirmation email as it gets closer to the time of the race. So they got some like little small obstacle courses and things, which I think is kind of interesting. Um, this is only the second annual time they've had this race. So it's going to be interesting to see. I don't think I'm going to be able to run back to the truck to get my camera for the run or the bike race. So this may be it until the end, but I'll try to get at least some type of footage for you guys out here. So again, it's a 5k run. It's a 10 mile bike race. And then um, through the woods and the paved trail from what I hear. And then it's another, I think, two mile run after that. So, oops. So, yeah, um, should be interesting. Um, so, yeah, I'll give you a follow up once I'm uh, done. And if I can get the camera after the run, then I'll try to do that. So. <sighs> you too. Um, first cross country race on the specialized epic, and man, all I can say is, is um, I had more fun today riding a bike than I had the first day I actually got on my mountain bike on the first video that I actually made. Today, I learned a lot. Um, things not to do, things to do. I don't know what my time was on anything. I'm going to get the results in a few. But um, racing that bike and seeing other people, how they race, the etiquette, the speed, it was it was really fun. Um, I'm sorry, I'm kind of just drifting off, man. I am. My legs are like jelly. My eyes are burning from the sweat. Um, what's crazy is... The 5K race that you do in the beginning is like in the sand. And so running isn't easy. So it, it drains a lot of energy from the start. Then you do the 10 mile bike race. And I would say out of that 10 miles, maybe about, I'm going to say about a mile and a half, maybe two miles of it is on the paved trail. The rest of it is like the most twists and turns, windy trail that I've been on and it's a lot of stumps it's a lot of roots but it's fast and you can go fast and I think today being that I knew I was in a race I wasn't as scared to um, not scared but nervous to go around corners as fast so I was taking everything at risk I was doing everything as fast as I could and if I was just gonna fall I was gonna fall there were at least about five or six times where it looked like the trees were exactly the length of the handlebars but I was just like, if I hit it, I hit it. I'm not slowing down. So I was kind of proud of myself for that because uh, usually I slow down because I don't know if I'm going to make it. But when you're in a race, it's like, yeah, I don't, I don't want to, you know, slow down. So um, I did have to slow down about three times to let people pass me. But other than that, not a whole lot of people passed me. Um, I got in my spot and the, oh shh, my eyes are burning, man. Hold on for a second, guys. I'm sorry. Uh, but. A lot of the race was in the sand too on the bike um so 
it was a tough race I'm not gonna lie and then after it was over having to do another two miles oh my god my legs are like jelly and then they had a couple of obstacles they weren't that hard but the last obstacle you got to carry a bucket of sand which probably weighs about a good 20 to 30 pounds go run it about I don't know what that is maybe 150 yards and then come back with the bucket before you cross over the finish line and then you run with that so it's just it's been crazy man I burned I don't know how many calories just now but um it was fun I'm not gonna lie I wish I had the camera I just didn't want to have to run all the way back to the truck and then run all the way back during each transition that would have wasted at least uh, a good five to seven minutes by doing that or well, maybe not that long about five minutes so but there were about three people right behind me so that five minutes would have put me about three or four places behind overall if I would have came back and got the camera so maybe on the next time I do this race uh, I'll put the description of the race below sorry I don't have any more footage of it but um, got a finishers medal and they are going to do awards for I think the top 10 in each age group I mean the top one first place male and female in each age group so I'll see if I win anything with that so so today I want to kind of do a recap of the race yesterday um, when I finished the race you know I came in and did a quick video I, I'm not sure how I'm going to edit everything but I kind of want to do a recap and review talk about some things that I learned uh, so I may kind of edit this in a weird kind of way uh, I'm on my way back to um, to Orlando now uh, it is Sunday the race was actually on Saturday and uh, just kind of wanted to do a little recap of everything um, I had fun I'm, I'm not gonna lie like I really enjoyed the race I didn't know exactly for sure how I was gonna like it just seeing how everything was starting off but it ended up really good and I'm really excited about it and I was um, man I was I was really happy to ride my bike in a, in a setting like that where I could go full force you know what I'm saying like not holding anything back not trying to um, you know be gentle with the bike or anything like when I'm in a race and I'm I'm doing like anything competitive I'm, I'm going to try to win and do my best so it's it's uh it's, it's just one of those things that's in me i've been running for a long time now here's the thing i learned a lot about the bike itself uh that epic is is fast and, and the cool thing about it is um the brain i could definitely hear it the suspension changing you know when I was going over really rough terrain when the terrain was kind of more smooth smoother I didn't necessarily I could hear it but I could feel it in the bike more than ever before I uh, did the best that I could but the, the thing about it is is I really didn't have time to train for this race because I was sick during the holidays so uh, you know I, I definitely think I did all right so there were about 80 people who had, who attended this race I came in eighth overall and I came in third in my age group um, and I think my total time was like an hour and 24 minutes but the thing about it is is when I did the first 5k I was good I'm used to running races I, I was good with that and a lot of people who weren't good runners you know were kind of behind me but when, once we got on the bike you could tell who the true cyclists are and a lot of them ended up passing me um, but I was keeping up pretty pretty good and then once we did the bike uh, 10 mile part it was time to do the the other two mile run I was able to catch up a couple of more places on there um, but yeah after that after that bike race like my legs were done like they were, they were really done so overall if I had to rate the race I definitely would give it an 8 out of 10 there were a few things that I didn't care about but if the guy who put it together was actually the one who set up all of the um, signs and all of the markers to tell you where to go if he did that by himself because he said he didn't really have a lot of help then I would give this race a 9 out of 10 because you know I'm sure it took a lot of work to go in there and do that but there were some spaces some, some spots that were a little bit confusing 
some turns on whether or not I was going the right way or not. But overall, it definitely was a good race. So things that I learned. Okay, when it comes to um, mountain bike racing on a on a cross country or any type of bike, uh, there's people. You know, I gotta respect this sport. I'm new to it. Coming from a runner standpoint, going into a cyclist or a biking uh, race, completely different world. Um, and I respect those who've been doing it for a long time. And you can tell those who've been doing it for a long time. Uh, I always kind of had this joke about running. So if you're running a, a race, whether it's a marathon, 10K, 5K, half marathon, whatever, whoever has the shortest shorts on is your competition. Those are the ones who, who, who are going to be serious about it. And the same thing with cycling. If they got a full, like I forgot, the, the body suits, the the, the the leotard things on, if they got those on, I already know they, they're they for real. And sure enough, most of the ones who passed me had the full, like, leotards on, or whatever you call them, the body suits, or whatever. And so, um, but I was, I was doing pretty good. The, the coolest thing about this for me was that if I'm normally out on the trail and I'm just doing, like, you know, a, a basic Saturday ride or whatever, um, I'm kind of holding back. You know, I'm being very cautious and careful. I don't want to fall. I don't want to hit a tree. I don't want my my uh, handlebar to hit a, hit hit a tree. So I'm I'm being very cautious. This race, there was none of that. There was no cautiousness. There was strictly like I'm trying to go as fast as I can and just hope that I won't, you know, fall or crash into something on there. And I, I went full speed. And when you know what that feels like now to go completely full speed without any worries it's a different type of feel because you know that you're really um you're you're, you're really doing it you know what i'm saying this isn't this isn't like practice this isn't uh, a, a, a a leisurely stroll in the woods this is for real and so yeah that was the the funnest part and actually learning more about what my bike can do and what it can handle i'm actually glad that um i did it because now unlike most people who always say oh you need to get a shorter stem you need to get a shorter stem i might actually need a longer stem that stem on, on the bike that came stock is kind of short already and it would be you know a little bit more comfortable i think for my arms if it was extended a little bit further out but I'm gonna have to play around with that, you know, just a little bit. The new tires that I put on it, the ground controls were excellent. If I would have kept those fast tracks on, the stock tires that came with that bike, I already know I would have crashed numerous times. As a matter of fact, I probably wouldn't even have been able to get through the first probably good mile of the bike race because it was in the sand. You know, it was a lot of sandy parts on there. And so I wasn't expecting it to be that much sand. But I would have been slipping and sliding everywhere. There. So I'm definitely glad that I got some new tires and put those on there as well. Even though I think it did add a little bit of weight to it, overall I still had a lot of control over the bike. Um, looking at other people, it's it's so funny how, you know, I guess this is kind of how the biking racing world goes. When you get there, people try to give you advice. You hear other people telling other people advice. You need to do this. Don't jump out too fast. You know, pace yourself. Um, you know, watch the watch the trees. You know, they're giving everyone all of this advice, and then I hear them saying other things that are kind of contradicting the first things that they said. So I went in there completely like, you know what? Let me just experience this for for myself and just kind of see for myself what this is really going to uh, be like. As far as the etiquette goes, as far as letting racers pass, I think I let two racers actually pass me. Um, it was some very tight corners in there to the point where I actually had to stop my bike and pull over to the side to let the guys, a couple of guys behind me go ahead of me because uh, it just wasn't in the other room. So uh, that kind of slowed me down a little bit. I do apologize for everybody that I wasn't able to get any race footage. But here's the thing. Um, if I would have had the camera chest mounted as I ran, it would have been too bouncy. It, it would have been too much because the sand was very soft and there's some hills and things of that nature. It would have been all over the place. I don't think that would have been a, a, a worth even filming. Now, to go after the, after the race, after the running race, when you transition to your bike, my car was parked, I would say at least at least 40 yards away from the transition area. 
so I could have got my camera but I would have to run a total of about 80 yards to and from my truck to get the camera and that would have took you know some time when I'm in a race mode I'm not trying to lose any seconds and so uh, you know I'm 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 focused man and so I really didn't want to have to run back to the truck strap it on on the chest mount and then you know film it but it really would have been some good footage because I was hauling ass on that thing and I, I really would like to see for myself how that footage would have looked it would have been a lot of just fast corners and turns um, on it might have probably got a lot of people dizzy or sick looking at it because that was probably the twistiest um, that was probably the twistiest and winding mountain bike trail that I've been on so far but I am glad that I have trails like uh, Markham Woods and uh, Snow Hill in Orlando because those two trails the Markham Woods and, and, and Snow Hill especially Markham Woods those trails will prepare you for races like that because there's a lot of tight corners it's a lot of tight trees and it's a lot of twists and turns on those trails and so that's my practice for a race like that so it, it, it wasn't like any of that was new to me if there would have been some technical things on there <clears throat> it, that would have made definitely the race a little bit more interesting but I'm glad it wasn't so now I'm in a whole different different type of uh, sport so I got to look at some other races but it kind of does make me nervous about doing an actual mountain bike entry-level race only with you know because you take the running part of it out and you got experts that are doing these bike these 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 mountain bike races definitely I'm, I'm, I'm nowhere near ready to even contend at this point in time I got to build stamina I got to build my endurance and I got to get familiar with how to truly race you know what I'm saying like you know there were times where I thought that I was by myself and I was hauling ass the next thing you know guys are like coming up behind me out of nowhere and I'm just like okay well how are they building that much speed up and I was in a pretty pretty high gear so I was I was hauling ass myself so I don't know There's some techniques I'm still gonna have to learn uh, regarding that seat uh, the dropper post let me tell you makes a world a world of difference with the dropper post especially in that setting where I'm going fast as I can and it's a race and there's you know some hills but mainly for there was a lot of roots in a lot of sections and so as I'm going you know as the trail is getting bumpy I kind of want to stand up and give more powers as I pedal uh, and so there were times where I wanted to kind of let the seat down low so I can kind of you know stand up a little bit more on the bike and, and really get it and so the dropper post came in handy tremendously tremendously I'm so glad I invested in that uh, I you know most of you guys have already heard people talk about it if you don't have one I guarantee you it's going to change your whole ride everything that you do with a dropper post so I highly invest in that I got a video on my review of mine it's called the bike yoke revive and check that video out um, you know if you want to learn more about the one that I have uh, other than that everyone was cool everyone was pretty friendly um, saw a lot of expensive bikes a lot of expensive bikes out there and you know it's not about the cost of the bike I saw some older bikes and people out there you know have some of their 26ers and you know some of the bikes I've seen from the 80s out there still still getting it so you know it doesn't matter really what you ride as long as you're having a good time I saw one guy out there with the GT Aggressor Pro you know so I was happy to see that you know so you don't have to have the most expensive bike but definitely saw some some five six seven thousand dollar bikes out there on that race and um, it's good to uh, to have a bike that I know is is in a different it's, it's kind of you know in a, in a different um, performance range on there because I'm, I'm really excited and happy to say that my bike came through um, with, with the performance on there no issues at all uh, if anything it's performed better than any of my little rides that I've done so far on it. It was almost as if like the bike said, hey, I'm ready if you are. <laughs> and 
and we both gave it our best and uh and i think we performed pretty pretty decent man so yeah um beautiful day it was like 73 degrees um you know so and come to find out i know before i didn't i kept saying i didn't know where i was port ritchie florida i've honestly never heard of port ritchie florida uh until this race but it's a really cool town beach town on the west coast of florida north of tampa um yeah i wanted to hit the beach today but just didn't have time got to go back to orlando run some errands and everything and so but overall i thought it was a, a good day I, again i do apologize for not getting any footage of the race but i guess you guys hopefully will understand you know if you're racing you don't have time to go run to your truck to get equipment and come back man you want to want to do the best that you can so uh trying to think what else i think that's about it so my next video i'm um, not sure what i'm going to be doing on the next video but uh i do want to register for some more races so that's one thing i'm going to be looking into i know alafaya has some upcoming entry-level races uh, so that may be my next one or i may go out of state or i may do something in a different different city again as well so I just want to get the experience of racing before I just jump in gung-ho, you know, doing cross-country mountain bike races. So I'm still just trying to build my uh, experience up a little bit. If you guys have any tips or hints, let me know. If you guys know any races in the area or outside the area that are coming up, please let me know. I appreciate you guys for the support, for checking me out, for watching this video. I'll check you in the next video. You guys be safe on the trails. And... Uh, I'll talk to you soon. Peace.